Hi guys, welcome back to part four. So we have disassembled. Um, that needs to be uh, cleaned out still. The uh, lime scale in there, I've got a solution for that. Um, the uh, the base plate, which is what I've been stripping down, grinding back, and re uh, repriming and repainting so far, is uh, uh, looking rather nice. That is now. There we go. Nice and shiny. All of the uh, surface imperfections dealt with. Now I will, before reassembling, T-cut that, but I'm going to uh, leave it a couple of days. So that's uh, straight out of the tin, hammerite, um, smooth, uh, straight to rust paint. Good stuff. Okay, so the base plate is sorted. That's the original colour on the bottom, not a million miles away. Close enough, I'm happy with that. Um, so that's done. Now there are a few bits and bobs still to be reconditioned. And one of them is this. Now that fits inside the uh, um, inside the boiler housing there, uh, and it's what the burner tray fits into. Okay, so the uh, the burner itself is either going to fit into that, and that's specially designed with these air holes, and the burner trays have corresponding air holes to allow uh, good burning of the solid fuel tablets. Now I don't particularly like the solid fuel tablets, they smell, they really do pong, and if you're going to use these things uh, inside in a well ventilated room with say windows or a nice big chimney, then uh, you're still going to find them smelly even if the, the fumes from them are getting uh, extracted suitably. So what I'm going to do with this, I am going to refit this, although I did toy with the idea, albeit briefly, of fabricating a replacement one of these, just modelling the same, so I, I can uh, I can work um, very thin sheet metal quite easily. I've got uh, an 8x4 sheet of 0.6mm steel in the garage anyway for bodywork repairs. Um, so um, I may well at some point get around to that on a different model, but not this one. This one, what I'm going to do instead, is I'm going to fabricate a mats burner that fits into this. Now that will be coming up in subsequent videos, but it's going to be using steel stock. Uh, and I'm planning to use this section, cut to length, as a mats reservoir uh, with a series of little uh, chimneys, if you will about half an inch long sticking up from that just welded on in various different positions giving you uh, options uh, on uh, burning at different rates so one two three or four burners uh, and i'm going to cap those off with um, plumbing end caps so it'll be a nice tidy little job but it will fit very comfortably into the original burner so i shall need to clean this up and that's what I'm looking at doing today. So there's a number of products out there that you can use to clean this stuff up. Um, uh, you have to be careful because they mostly contain acid. Um, in fact, they all contain acid, so always wear goggles and always wear gloves. So I'll just pop some of these blue nitrile gloves on as we go. You'll see me using these on the cars all the time. So it's something I have lying around, but it's um, very, very handy to have some. Um, so it's very important to make sure that you uh, take safety seriously when you're dealing with any um, acids. And there are a number of acids I'm going to be involving in this process. Now to deal with the lime scale in the boiler, um, I could use vinegar, or more appropriately I could use a product which is actually specifically designed for um, coffee machines, electric kettles, all that good stuff. Um, now I'm going to be putting it in for 5 to 10 minutes at a time, not leaving it in overnight and being extremely careful to stop the application just the second that the last of the lime scale is gone. We'll come back to that another day. In relation to the rust, there's a couple of options. Now, if you want to spend 13 or 14 pounds, you can get this stuff. It does what it says on the label. It does bring back to bare metal eventually. It's pretty slow, doesn't damage paintwork. Um, I, the reason I have this tub is because I was doing some restoration work uh, on an old matchless uh, motorcycle, old G2. Um, so basically that, <laughs> that there was enough, enough money in the job to, to justify getting the real stuff. Um, if you are a bit short of cash though, another gel that does a fantastic job of dealing with surface rust 
is Harpic 10x, the cleaning product. You can get a litre of that for about £1.30 uh, from just about anywhere, home base B&Q, you know, any hardware store. So Harpic 10x is the stuff. Now I don't have any of that at the moment, so I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this stuff. But this is, as I say, £13, £14, whereas Harpic 10x is £1.30. So you pay your money, you take your choice. I would say with the Harpic, it is a stronger acid in the solution, designed to deal with lime scale again. It will really, really very effectively get rid of surface rust spots on chrome, on all sorts. You have to test it on a small area first, though, to make sure that it's not going to damage your surface. Anyway, I'm going to be using this stuff today. It's, um, it's weird stuff, but you basically paint it on, leave it, and let it do its work. So I have the gloves on, I've got my goggles on, and this is the stuff. A green gel, kind of remind you of Swarfiga, only it smells, it smells like uh, kind of yoghurt. Not entirely sure what the uh, magic ingredient is in this, but uh, anyway, some kind of... Uh, some kind of acid. So all you have to do is paint it on, literally, um, and then leave it to do its stuff. Now, once this has dealt with the surface rust, I'm going to uh, clean it back up. Uh, probably oops, sorry, knocking you there. Probably uh, with some Brasso. Uh, Brasso does a lovely job of just getting rid of dirt. But at the minute, we need to uh, get rid of the, the rust itself. So I'm going to leave that setting there. I'll zoom you in on it. Um, I'm going to leave that going um, and see how long it takes to, uh, to start to have an effect. Nice liberal coat of that on there. It won't affect the plastic. I can uh, I can clean this up again afterwards. And periodically, over the next few minutes, I'm going to uh, come back and just agitate the surface of that. So for now, that's the first coat on. Just leave that to do its thing and uh, see what happens. starting to look good now so I'm going to leave this overnight. This piece doesn't really matter if it gets slightly etched. Um, any of the other pieces I'd be a little bit more uh, cautious with. I'm just going to, because this is hidden deep inside the uh, uh, the boiler housing then you'll never see it. This is really just uh, a practical thing to stop it from rusting further in future so I will be uh, Giving this a uh, one, one last top up with some uh, fresh gel here, and that will do us for tonight. So I will uh, leave this going. Hello, guys. Welcome back. So it's, it's now the next morning, and um, I've just washed this down with um, soapy water. To get rid of all of the uh, the gel, uh, all that remains to be done now, is, now that the rust is all gone and that's lovely and smooth, uh, is use a bit of brasso wadding here, just to uh, clean that up now. Get rid of all of the grime that's built up, all the deposits of carbon and so on. I'm just going to use this as intended, just to. Uh, clean the last of the dirt off and you can see it's not rust that's coming off now it is actually just uh, um, burned on grime dust that's settled on it over the years and then been sealed in place by the heat uh, won't take long just to clean this up um, and then once it's completely cleaned back down I am toying with the idea of giving it a coat of um, cure rust uh, to take it back to a stable surface and then maybe giving it a blast of some high temperature engine paint. I've got some black high temperature engine paint kicking around somewhere. 
uh, just to uh, protect it in future. Stop it going rusty again because uh, wouldn't do to bend the tabs on this to take it apart too many times and this is definitely a part that you can't get at. Uh, so toying with that idea, might happen, might not, we'll see. Um, certainly it would be unauthentic to the original. I am doing a sympathetic restoration of this thing so uh, in the meantime let's just get it cleaned up back to uh, back to factory and uh, see what happens. This Brasso is good stuff and if you've ever used it but it's basically just lint wadding with some hydrocarbon action going in. Um, problem with rusty things when you're trying to use Brasso is that the rust tends to tear it to pieces and you end up with uh, just a big old mess of fibres all over the place. So with the rust removing gel doing its work uh, and then the, the Brasso cleaning the gun calf afterwards very quickly we can get back to uh, super clean metal ready to refit. So given what it looked like yesterday that is a pretty satisfactory outcome. Still the other side to do, still the top to do. I'll uh, spend another 10 or 15 minutes now, there's no point in you watching that, it's going to be more of the same, just rubbing it with lint, wiping it down with an old rag. Um, but I'm confident that we can get the whole thing looking nice and shiny again, uh, and then get that reinstalled. Alright guys, so there we go, this is what can be achieved with a bit of rust removal gel and some brasso and a bit of elbow grease. I see most of the dirt's now on my hands but uh, that is pretty much factory fresh. I'm very happy with that. Uh, just so that you don't think I've uh, picked up a second hand unit or a brand new old stock piece aftermarket. I haven't yet polished the bottom, of course I'm going to because no one let us see it but I know. Um, so uh, let's give this a uh, bit of a clean up and uh, this is ready to go back on the base plate. So uh, I'll keep all of the assembly together as one piece, we'll do that after, but uh, for now that's where I'm going to end this video. Uh, next job is uh, paint stripper and a few other bits and bobs, um, uh, depending on how long that takes to work I might even get uh, another video of uh, D-Lime scaling the boiler in as well before the end of today. So. Uh, if uh, this is your kind of thing then don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. I can't promise it's what's always going to pop up on the channel because usually I do uh, put videos of working on uh, working on a variety of different cars but um, this is definitely something that I like to do on a rainy day and I've got a few fabrication jobs coming up in exactly this space as well so uh, keep an eye out for that. So uh, yeah thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy guys.